Hey guys, um, like you said, I'm Lucy. Um, yeah, that was probably a much larger introduction than I could have ever given myself. So this is Dr. Jellican and Mr. Pe Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Pelican. Um, yeah, comparison to site generators. Let's get started. Um, so I asked the all-knowing mage Google uh, what a static site generator exactly was, because I feel like opening with definitions is kind of a good way to go about things. Uh, and Google actually didn't know, praise be to Google. Um, so we'll kind of like break it apart a little uh, just to get a better understanding of like kind of what we're talking about or what we mean when we say static site generator. Um, so a static site is basically a, a website that doesn't take any user data um, is like maybe the easiest way to think about it. Um, Another way to think about it is instead of asking questions, it just gives statements. Um, that's kind of one way that I think about it. Um, basically, it's just HTML, CSS, and maybe some aesthetic JavaScript. So like, if you have a drop-down menu that you want to do some fancy stuff with the DOM or something, um, that's kind of the idea of a static site. And then the generator part basically says, we're going to take a simpler language than HTML and compile it into HTML. Usually it's like markdown or structured text or LaTeX or um, kind of whatever like texty markdown you're more comfortable in. Um, yeah, and it basically plops that into a template, calls it good. Um, does anyone have any questions about that? Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, also, just uh, maybe another note before I like really dive into this talk, it is meant to be a little bit of a discussion. So um, if you have a question or if you've used one of these tools and have something to comment on about it, uh, definitely feel free to raise your hand. And I'm not going to be like, no, you can't say things. Um, so yeah. Moving on. Um, so what makes a good static site generator is another thing. Like, How can we compare these two tools uh, like what grounds do we have to say, oh, this one's better than this other one? And really that depends on your use case. Um, for me personally, I am really comfortable with restructured text and with Markdown, I just end up opening up Daring Fireball and like going off of that for the entire time and that kind of slows down my process. Uh, so like restructured text for me, that support is pretty important. Um, working really well with GitHub is another thing that I think is really important for a lot, especially of open source. Uh, web developers for kind of obvious reasons. Like, one, deploying on GitHub is silly easy. You literally just push uh, and you're good. And to boot, like, your stuff is already uh, source uh, version controlled anyway. So like, that's really helpful. Uh, a lot of us have our sites on GitHub anyway, so if it's just one less step to push changes to our site, that's pretty awesome. Um, so hosting products on GitHub is something that's important. And also the ability to have source files be on GitHub, which I know um, is a little like, when is an instance when you couldn't have source files on GitHub? But um, if there's a lot of accessory source files that come with building the site that you don't really want to have on there, it can make it really hard for other people who are trying to contribute to get involved um, and to know what's going on or what configurations you have and so on. Um, Having it be really customizable, so having it be easy to stick a theme into or make changes to, for me, is another thing that's really important. I don't usually like to use default themes that come with static site generators, um, so having it be really easy to create my own theme for my site uh, and then stick that on to the static site is something that's pretty important for me. Um, I guess another point to make is that I usually don't use them for blogs, which I know a lot of people do. So blogs support is something that's less important for me, um, which can be actually a little bit of a hindrance with stuff like Jekyll. Um, so Je what Jekyll does is in all of your blog posts, it has you format the uh, title of the file such that it's the date, and then the title of your, uh, of your blog post, and then dot markdown, um, which for me, I don't really care that much about having the date be part of the file, and in fact, it makes it really hard to tab complete when I'm trying to find a certain post that I want to edit, um, things like that. So these are the kind of things that we take into consideration when we're uh, talking about static site generators. And for everyone, of course, that's different. So 
a couple of things to consider are like, kind of like I said, like what markdown languages are really important to you. What language is the tool actually written in? So if you're really comfortable with Ruby, then Jekyll might be really good because you can create a plugin for it if you find there's something you don't need. Or um, maybe you do find a plugin, but you want to edit it. And if you already know Ruby really well backwards and forwards, then like that's a pretty huge plus. Uh, same goes for Pelican with Python. Um, if you are more comfortable with Python, then writing customizations is a lot easier, or even contributing, if that's something that you're interested in. So these are all things to take into consideration. Um, so the next question is, what do you guys think is important in deciding which static site generator to use? Um, and obviously your, import, your opinion is less important than mine, since I'm the one giving this talk. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Um, but does anyone have any comments on that? Yeah? Uh, you mentioned that you don't necessarily use these technologies for blogging. Yeah. Do you blog, and if so, what technology do you use for that? I don't actually blog. I have a recipes website, which is as close to blogging as I get. And for that one, I use Pelican because it's what I'm more familiar with. And so kind of, again, with the workflow thing, like it's just one that I've been using for so long that I don't have to like look stuff up or think about, like, oh, how would I do this? Um, but I can, yeah, I mean, pretty much this talk is like why I made that decision. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so my <coughs> was, I had a website that I had to manually add PHP with, I had to manually add PHP to make a new blog post, which is no way now. So <laughs> I heard about static site generators, and I was like, yeah, this sounds awesome. I just had like a really simple markup format, like restructured text or markdown. Uh, which if you haven't heard of those, I would definitely encourage you to Google them. It's like, it looks readable, not like HTML in any way. Um, and so basically I heard about it and I was like, cool, let's just Google for all of them. So one big decider was, could I get it working in like five minutes? So I think the first one I used was Jekyll because it's super easy to set up, um, but maybe not as powerful as some other tools that you sort of get into the, the work. So I, I, I know that Pelican is a little bit more of a challenge than some people experience, but it has some pluses, like what you said, it's built with Python, One of the reasons I went with Jekyll when I first learned about these was because um, GitHub hosts it, and so it was really easy to make a public site that then I could have collaborators on. So like I did a, a program teaching people programming and getting them to learn version control by having to post their blog posts through a Git push uh -huh. uh, was really useful too. Nice. Yeah, and also um, then we used one at work uh, for uh, scripted content because we could post to GitHub's API to a repo too. So for uh, change sets and releases, we could just have a release change sets blog and again, just hands off. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, so there's this kind of cool website called slant.co. Uh, I don't know if I should say slant.co or slant.co. But um, they actually had like a little poll of like why people chose to use certain static site generators. Um, so a couple of the things that people said were user friendliness, so that's the high five your computer, like how uh, easy is it to interact with, make changes to, um, you know, in order to push a new blog post, do I need to like edit some raw PHP, uh, or is it just like make a file, push to GitHub done? Um, another thing was that, uh, well, people said that Jekyll was not very easy to use with Windows, and that was a big problem, obviously, for Windows users. I was kind of like, I don't really care so much about that. Um, but to some people, it's important. Um, so those are a couple of things that like the community at large, I guess, had to um, say. And I guess to go with the Windows thing, like to take it a little more seriously, uh, having it work well with your platform or your system setup, whatever that may be, uh, it's probably pretty important because like, you know, spinning up a VM to uh, change your blog post probably is not that much fun. Um, so, uh, oh, goodness gracious. Uh, that is not a list. All right, well, I'm just gonna talk about things that Jekyll does well, and you can imagine that there's words on this screen. Um, so, uh, as people have pointed out, Jekyll works very, very well with GitHub, and that's because GitHub pages are actually powered by Jekyll, essentially. So there's like a cute little 
gem, like GitHub Pages Ruby gem, uh, that kind of acts as a uh, middleware for the two uh, technologies. And then pushing, like you can host your Jekyll site on GitHub um, super easily. Uh, and then anytime you want to make changes to your site, you just push to GitHub, which you're probably doing anyway, since uh, version control is a cool guy. And there you have your site and updated changes, and it's easy to work with. Um, it's also very, very well documented. One of the uh, best parts about Jekyll is not only does it have a really pretty and easy to navigate site, but there's also a ton of Stack Overflow posts. So because GitHub uses it, a lot of other people start using it. It's almost sort of the default static site generator if you really just need something to be up really quick. Um, and because of that, pretty much any problem that you have ever run into, someone else has run into it and solved it. Um, and so that like combination of developer-generated documentation and user-generated documentation um, definitely makes it really easy to troubleshoot and to use. Um, and if you have any questions about configuration, uh, that's super useful. To go along with that, there's also a really strong community that's creating a lot of plugins for Jekyll. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but one of the downsides to Jekyll uh, is that it's not super powerful, but you can kind of augment that using some of the plugins that people have created. Um, and having that community uh, and those uh, tools is pretty helpful. Um, yeah. It has a nice default theme, although pretty much every static site generator I've ever used has a nice default theme, so I don't know that that's really uh, a super big plus, but it does look pretty good out of the box. It's super easy to set up, especially if you already have Ruby installed or are not like on a brand, brand new system, although even then, uh, it's like Eli said, it's something that you can get up and going in pretty much five minutes. Um, once you get Ruby set up, which, yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, so I mean, that's really the big draw of Jekyll, is like, it's not looking to be super powerful, it's not looking to um, be something that, you know, command line hackers uh, or people who want to make really beautiful front end uh, interfaces are looking to use. Um, but if you need a site really quick that can look okay and deliver your content, Jekyll is probably the static site generator that you want to go with. Um, yeah. Uh, so a couple of things that Jekyll doesn't do well. Uh, one of them I already mentioned, it doesn't work very well on Windows. Uh, I can't really attest to this. It was just something I read on the internet, which obviously makes it true. Um, uh, yeah, I don't really know why that would be or why that is, but um, read more. Um, and one of the other cons also that I already mentioned is that it's not super powerful. Um, and by powerful, I, in a way, I mean configurable because um, static site generators, like, it does its job. It takes Markdown, writes HTML, displays your content really easily. Like, if that's all you're asking, then Jekyll does the job. Um, but, like, I was actually looking for a way to categorize my posts and then display all the posts in a certain category. And I had to install a plugin to do that it didn't come out of the box. And that seems like a pretty simple functionality to me. Um, so stuff like that where you're looking for something maybe more custom or configurable, um, you'll sometimes have to work a little bit harder to get there. Um, another thing that was really hard to do was stuff like drop down menus. Um, finding a gem that did that and integrating it into my Jekyll site was non-trivial. Um, yeah, stuff like that. So, um, and then to contrast with that, things that Pelican does well, uh, it's uh, not necessarily the opposite, but um, a lot of stuff that Jekyll doesn't do well, Pelican does do really well. Um, so let me actually pop open the settings page. Um, uh, oh, bother. All right, maybe not. Um, but so one of the appeals of Pelican is that there are literally hundreds of settings, uh, which can be really overwhelming if that's not what you're looking for. Um, but if you want to change like your URL paths, uh, where your static files are located, uh, which pages are rendered, which pages aren't rendered, which templates you're using, which theme you're using, 
um, pretty much everything that you can possibly think of uh, can be configured in Pelican super easily just by editing your configuration file. So that is super awesome. Um, and it means that uh, with Pelican, it's a lot easier to do things like create a list of um, posts that are in a certain category. A lot of those um, variables and data that Pelican uses to create your static site are available to the user. Um, and so because of that, it's easier to make the site look exactly how you want it to and to move data through your site in uh, the way that you intend. So that's really cool. Um, another thing is that it's written in Python, which uh, again, it depends on what language you're most comfortable with, but <laughs> uh, everybody, this is my mom. <laughs> I already told them you were coming, so. Um, so uh, if you want to make a plugin for Pelican and you're most comfortable working in Python, which I am, and I, uh, you know, the community is divided, but like a lot of people are, then that's also a really huge plus. Um, another thing is that I found that it's a much more open uh, community around Pelican. So even though the Jekyll community is much bigger, uh, I've like submitting a pull request to Pelican uh, was a lot easier. And communicating with its developer, uh, whose name is Justin Mayer, who is an excellent man, if you ever run into him or want to send him an email, uh, he's very conversant and very nice. Um, and so it was a lot easier to work with them as an open source community. Um, yeah. So uh, I guess to summarize, uh, it Pelican, uh, gives you more freedom as a developer and particularly as a front-end developer. Um, it's easier to make a theme, I found, uh, easier to configure, easier to customize, um, and just a little bit more powerful as a static site generator. All right, so the cons of Pelican. One, it is non-trivial to host on GitHub, as I discovered uh, when I tried to uh, do kind of what um, he was saying he was trying to do, where you would have other people contribute to the site, it did not go well. Um, I ended up with this gross, like, run this bash script and then force push to master, and then also push to gh-pages. It was not good. Um, so hosting it somewhere else uh, is pretty easy. It just generates HTML files. You stick them on a server somewhere, like a DigitalOcean droplet or um, whatever the case may be. Uh, that part's not hard but actually hosting it on GitHub was not easy. Um, it also is a little less user-friendly, like uh, Eli was saying. Uh, that's not to say that you can't get one up and going in just five minutes, but if you've never used a static site generator before and aren't very familiar with them, it can take a little bit of time to get your sea legs and get to know the code base really well and know what you can and can't do with Pelican. Uh, it does have really good documentation, but there is pretty much no help on the internet. Like if you get an error in Pelican and you Google it, it's the kind of thing where there's like two results and you're like, well, fuck. Um, so if you're looking to contribute on Stack Overflow and like post a question and then answer it yourself, uh, this might be a good way to do that. Uh, but if you're actually looking for answers um, and why you're getting this silly error, uh, I've actually ended up like looking through the code base to try to find like where the error is generated and why it generates that. Um, and that's my troubleshooting, which is not optimal in a lot of situations. Um, and that's not necessarily anybody's fault, it's just that there's a lot less users who use Pelican. So um, if you're comfortable with uh, kind of like wandering around in a forest, I guess, that is uh, the Pelican static site generator and um, being okay with getting an error and not knowing where it came from, then it's a decent trade-off of getting more power and more configurability, but yeah. <coughs> All right, so some things that both of them do well. Like I said, both of them have really beautiful themes and have several themes. Uh, Pelican, the, de the primary developer, Justin, has worked really hard, I think, to have uh, more than just one theme that is really easy to just pop into your site. So uh, you have a choice of a couple of different themes. With Jekyll, again, because it has such a wide user base, there are tons of themes out there that people have made, um, and they're really easy to install and use. Um, so that's a pretty big plus, especially if you're not looking to like make your site pretty, if you just like want it to be there and 
look fine and you don't want to write any CSS, then uh, that's a pretty huge plus. Both of them uh, do their job really well. Like I said, they are good at taking Markdown and generating HTML. And um, like, you can't complain about that. And there, that's not to say that every static site generator is that way. Um, I was working with one called Hugo, which is written in Go. And just generation, like running the make file, I, got, I tried a couple different times, got like five different error messages, and in the end just gave up, because it was like, I don't want to work this hard to generate HTML. Um, yeah. All right, and then a couple of things that neither do well. So one of the biggest problems with static site generators is that they're not very user-friendly for non-technical people. So at my workplace, we actually have a couple of static sites, kind of like the little introduction told you. Um, and teaching our writers to be able to contribute to those is sometimes non-trivial. Deckle obviously makes that a lot easier because you can just write stuff in the GitHub GUI, um, and that, uh, you know, pretty much anyone can do. It's just a nice little uh, WYSIWYG, essentially, um, that can just, you know, it's a nice web interface for just writing content. So uh, that does make it a little bit easier, but you still have to teach someone how to use GitHub, and that can sometimes not be the easiest. Um, and then with something like Pelican, or pretty much any other static site generator, where you're not just writing stuff on GitHub, uh, you have to teach someone to use the command line, which I think could be really scary. And then even markdowns, as human readable as they are, uh, there is sometimes some nuance to learning how to uh, make them look how you want them to. And even in stuff like regular markdown, like making a table in regular markdown is not easy, nay impossible. Um, so that's definitely one of the biggest problems with static site generators, and I think that's a direction that a lot of the developers are looking to move towards, but it's a problem that hasn't really been solved. And then, like, the closer you get to, well, we want this to be really user-friendly, the closer you get to stuff like WordPress, which is not really what uh, the goal of a static site generator is. Um, so this is just an XKCD of, like, um, troubleshooting, essentially. Uh, how to walk your relatives through a problem that they're having. Um, I don't know. It's a little hard to see. In retrospect, it might not. Um, so to summarize, if you're looking for something that's very easy, very user friendly, uh, and that you need to be up really, really quick, Jekyll is definitely your guy. Um, it's really easy to have on GitHub. It's easy to have other people contribute. Um, it's got a really wide user base with lots of good documentation. And those are a lot of really big pluses. But if you're looking for something a little bit more powerful, more customizable, something where you really want to go crazy with the theme and flex your wings a little bit, uh, Pelican might be the option for you. And it's definitely something that I think is worth trying out if you have the time or the wherewithal. Um, it's, you know, see for yourself which one is really better, which one meets my needs more, uh, which one would I be more comfortable using going forward. Any question? Oh, uh, these are a couple of other static site generators. There are literally hundreds of them. Like I think this morning there was 389. Uh, I will have these slides online, so you can follow these links. Um, these were a couple of the most widely used ones. I link like did the list based on beauty of their website, not on ease of use, because <laughs> um, that's how I judge my tools. Um, yeah, so basically there's a lot of options and a lot of things to try out. Thank you.